It's Tuesday, the 26th of October, 2021. A lot of wind today, all due to that big storm that walloped California with over a foot of rain and feet of snow in the Sierra Nevada in some areas. Well, we're going to have strong winds in many areas. We last week talked about how strong those jet stream winds were with the system, and that's going to translate to very windy conditions along the Continental Divide today and tonight. And it's still going to be kind of windy even into Wednesday and Thursday. So really a fall-like pattern for sure with this front moving on through. We are going to see some mountain snow today, tonight, into early tomorrow. In fact, lingering snow showers into Wednesday. I think for the lower elevations, it's going to be rain and snow showers, but the speed of the front will keep the lower elevations from getting too much. Friday looks great. If there's a day to circle on your calendar, that's Friday. Friday is going to be mild. The winds will die down, but our confidence is growing that we've got colder weather, a snow event for some areas of the high plains and Rockies. As we get into Sunday and Monday, it could be quite cold in many areas of the United States in the central and southern areas of the U.S. relative to average by the time we get on into the middle of next week. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. So this late October snap to colder weather and unsettled weather conditions remains on schedule. Today's satellite photo shows very nicely the frontal boundary and the rain and snow that's associated with this front right along this boundary right here. Yesterday, this system was here. I mean, it has gone a big distance very quickly. By tomorrow morning, it will be out here and then all the way into the Great Lakes and Midwest by tomorrow night. A very quick moving system. And here it is showing up very well on the charts this morning. This wave is going to zip on through. As you can see up north, and this will play a role in the forecast later. See all that blue up there? A lot of cold air building up in the higher latitudes. Now, the system is going to race through the area today. By tomorrow morning, it's going to be well out into the plains, kind of losing its definition and weakening. But strong northwest winds aloft will keep us cool and breezy behind the system for tomorrow. This is what the moisture looks like, and you can see that the forecasted precipitation over the Central Rockies and Plains lines up really well with what you saw in the satellite photos there. So west of the divide in Colorado, the Wasatch Front, Wyoming's Western Mountains, North Central Mountains, back into the Bitterroot here, and then onshore flow will continue to keep Washington and Oregon coastal areas wet. This system, though, as you can see, once it gets east of the divide, it's not going to produce as much on the plains. Along the higher elevations of I-80, the higher mountain passes and higher elevations of I-70 and I-15, windy conditions there, wet conditions with some showers. So travelers keep that in mind. And hunters in these mountain ranges right here today and tomorrow need to be prepared for winter weather. This is what the snowfall looks like over the next 24 to 48 hours. You can see this is mainly a mountain event. And as you get above 8,000 feet, not a lot on the plains. As we go forward, Friday, this is what we talked about Friday being a good day. We're going to have a pretty good low spin up. Basically, you, this is the same California storm. It's going to get re-energized and become a big rain producer and cause some nasty weather along the East Coast while high pressure moves in as we get into Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Our next troublemaker doesn't really show up really well. It's very subtle. But a lot of times when you change season, these little subtle features, when all the stars line up, end up being big weather producers. So I'm going to circle the next big weather producer right here. Doesn't look like much, does it? It's a little upper level low there in British Columbia. It looks innocuous. But if you were to kind of look above, and you can see that those blue and green colors showing the air loft is really cold up there behind it. So for this to be a big weather maker, it has to pull this cold air into it. And then we have to see the this move out and the jet stream sort of get a realignment. And that's what happens. I'm going to show you the forecasted temperatures for Friday morning in Alaska, the Yukon, and all the way back across the Aleutians and then up into Siberia up here. You see all the gray? The gray means sub-zero temperatures. So we've got cold air coming across the pole and into this area right here. And that low in British Columbia is going to be able to draw in this colder air. So what will happen is, this is something we talked about 
over the last couple of weeks. Late October stratospheric warming event that would take the high latitude colder air and move it from the high latitudes to the lower latitudes. And this is what happens by Sunday. Notice the pattern becomes amplified. And we have, again, it's very innocuous. It doesn't look like much. But for those of you who remember the outbreak of cold in February of 2021, it kind of looked like this to where you got cold air coming in out of Canada, building up, and all you needed is the right setup to send it south. With high pressure building along the west coast, remember, high pressure in the Gulf of Alaska and off the eastern areas of the Pacific opens a door to Canadian air. The notice the wind barbs are coming in from the north. Now this is at 18,000 feet, but what happens is, the colder air, which is close to the ground, colder air always goes to the lowest point of gravity because colder air is more dense. It's heavier. So it goes to the lower, it always will go to the lowest point of gravity, whether it's a river valley, it'll go to the lowest spot. So what happens is we have the right setup for lower level cold to escape. And if that escapes, it heads south along the divide. And by Monday, Again, you see this kink right here. You're going to have a lot of really cold air here coming in south. But it looks rather benign. It really doesn't look anything scary. You don't see a big circle. You don't see a big strong low. But you have a lot of moving parts. You have cold air that will cause upslope winds. And you have a tap of Pacific moisture coming in to invade and go over and on top of that colder air. And we'll go into more detail with this. But this is a good example where several weather features come together to make a major event instead of just a major or organized storm. Sometimes weather can be really subtle and still have big impacts. By Sunday noon, these are temperatures relative to average. Notice the cold air gets backed up against the Continental Divide here. And by Sunday noon, colder air is all the way down into the northern Texas panhandle. These are all temperatures relative to average, so the cold air spills in. If you look by noon Monday, temperatures relative to average are a lot colder along and east of the Continental Divide. West of the Divide, some of that cold air leaks in as well. This is an impressive little cold shot, but certainly it's going to be along and east of the Divide where all the things are going to come together. Snowfall by, th by the middle of next week looks like this along that frontal boundary. So you notice how far out now that colder air is and the snow now, look at this. Snow in Texas by November 1. Remember the chances of colder air spilling southward and going more deep south is always higher in a La Nina pattern as opposed to an El Nino one. Remember this pattern because we may very well see it again later this fall and winter. Patterns tend to repeat themselves during the course of a season. So kind of remember what's going to transpire late this weekend and early next week. These are temperatures relative to average by Thursday and Friday of next week. So relative to normals, all the blue and green here shows a good chunk of the U.S. colder than normal. Now, is this record cold? Well, maybe for parts of Texas it will be. I don't think for the rest of the U.S., but it's going to be cold. Now, this is something that is something that we go back, we'll go back to during the course of the fall and winter. Notice relative to average, colder than normal across the lower 48 states, but warmer than normal across Alaska and the higher latitudes. This is perfectly normal. When you displace the cold air from the higher latitudes to the lower latitudes, temperatures relative to the 30 year averages will always be out of sync. A lot of people say, well, how could it be warmer in Alaska relative to average than Texas? It's perfectly normal. It doesn't mean the climate's out of whack. These displacements are perfectly what you would expect when you see these big displacements across Northern hemisphere cold seasons as you get in the fall and winter. And what will happen is this will extinguish itself. We'll then see another pocket of cold air build in the higher latitudes later in November, only to move south again as we get to the middle to the end of the month. So an interesting scenario unfolding, and this is something, as I mentioned earlier, could repeat itself. And I think it's gonna be a big factor this winter, especially with the high energy prices, because it could be moving markets, the weather will, this fall and winter. Have yourself a great Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow.